if you spend any time around Theta Pond at the OSU campus, you're going to see ducks and geese. They're all over the place, and pretty much regardless of the time of year, you're going to see ducks and geese, even in the winter. And they're there so often that it's almost like it's almost too easy. It's almost like cheating to go and get a picture of a duck or goose at Theta Pond because you're always going to find one. They might not always cooperate with you or or pose. Or, I mean, they're not going to pose, but they're not going to be exactly how you want. But they're always going to be present, and so it's kind of like a no-brainer. If you want to get a picture of a duck or goose, you just grab your camera and walk to Theta Pond, and you will get something. So because of that, I don't find it particularly challenging to shoot photos of ducks and geese at Theta Pond. But I think I need to get over that because there is still a lot of interesting ways to photograph these animals. Just because I might have already taken a whole bunch of photos of ducks and geese doesn't mean that I can't create an interesting composition with the same types of animals. And that's what happened here. This was a overcast, slightly rainy mid-September day in fall of 2020. I was on my way back from teaching class and I was walking around Theta Pond with my camera with no special picture in mind, but I walked past this duck, this uh, female duck that was sitting on the sidewalk and it, nothing really occurred to me. I wasn't like, oh wow, I should take her picture. So I, I just kind of walked past, but what did stand out to me was that she didn't move. And that is highly irregular. Most of these ducks and geese, even though they're around college students, will still move out of your way when they see you coming. Uh, not that they owe you anything. They just, they have learned that uh, it's best to just stay off the sidewalk because it's full of pedestrians. So the, because this duck didn't move, it made me wonder if I could get a picture of it that I don't normally get. And so I, I paused, I turned around and I kind of slowly backed up or turned around and, and slowly went back to where I was. And I took out my camera. Well, I already had my camera out, but I engaged photo mode of my camera. instead of just leaving it dangle on my side and held it down low and got a picture. Then I, and it didn't move. The duck didn't move. And I thought, well, maybe I can try a little more. So I got slightly closer. I set my camera on the ground. It was literally resting on the ground to get this shot and engaged live view so I could get just the right composition for this shot. I mean, your camera's on the ground. The only way you can look through the viewfinder is if you also lay down on the ground. And believe me, you don't want to lay down on the ground by Theta Pond. You'll have to wash your clothes as soon as you get up. So I have, I have my camera on the ground and I, I think I shot this wide open because I just wanted a laser sharp focus on the eye and everything else blurred out. And normally I don't shoot photos like that wide open because the, the focal point isn't quite as sharp at 1.8. At 1.8 on my 50 millimeter lens, on a higher quality lens it would be, but generally 1.8 is not the best solution, but I didn't really care. I wanted, I knew what I wanted. I wanted that eye in focus and that's, that's how I did it. And I actually kept on scooting my camera just ever so slightly closer. And the nice thing about shooting in live view is yes, focusing is slow. Yes, on the old, I think this is my D7100. And so that camera is like seven years old, eight years old and live view is just slow but it's great for something like this where you really want your subject to be in focus and you can zoom in in live view and really double check that whatever you think is being focused on is focusing. And that's exactly what I did here. And I couldn't believe that this duck was letting me take her picture over the course of probably a, at least a minute. And I, I just played around with a, a couple different uh, compositional elements. Like I scooted my camera a little, cl little bit closer and, and uh, uh, shifted the angle a little bit. And what I got was a photo that I'm really proud of. The first thing that you notice, I hope, is the eye. And the, that eye staring right at you was not in every photo. Sometimes she was blinking, sometimes she was, her head was turned, but it worked great here. And then you see the, the blue and white on those feathers. Um, you see the blurry background, the completely destroyed, like blurry foreground. I, I'm just so happy with how this photo turned out and I had no intention of taking it. And it was really cool to be able to do that. I, I think there was, there was a lot of times when I would have tried to get this photo in a more traditional sense with the optical viewfinder, but I've really been experimenting more with live view and not, treat, not treating it as a second class citizen on a DSLR, just a different way of shooting photos. And it certainly did work out here.